Hi everyone, I'm back with another etude. Um, today we have etude number seven by Matteo Carcassi. <laughs> So I keep coming back to these Carcassi etudes because I find them to be a good mix between introducing something technical that you can work on, but also being just a beautiful piece of music. So it's interesting to practice and you can start working on the melodic and the musical part of the piece while you're working on the technique. And it's more inspiring to do so than working on musical things in a piece that doesn't sound that pretty. So this etude particularly, um, I think a lot of people think of it as like a tremolo introduction, which yes, you can think of it that way. There are bits and pieces of tremolo. Um, it doesn't really sustain long enough to really call it a tremolo etude because I feel like for tremolo you need to, to maintain it continuously because that's what happens, not just for a measure. So this would be a good intro for tremolo, but it's not really enough on its own. However, you can use this etude to work on coordination and synchronization between the two hands. And what I mean by that is we don't always um, change the left hand on the downbeat when the harmony changes on when the chord changes because sometimes melody notes need to linger over and overlap to the next beat in order for them to sound legato. What, am I, what I mean by that is this. So in the beginning here, it's pretty obvious because the melody is on the downbeat, it's in the bass. But then when the arpeggios come in here, you have another line. And that's not on the beat. This, those are in between beats, right, right in the middle. So what I would do is when I'm playing, instead of doing this, sorry, and take them off and cut them off, I would hold it while the other two notes are being played. Technically, I'm in the next beat already, but my F is still lingering, holding that down. note that connects to the F comes up. This is an open string so you don't have to worry about it. But here I'm going to hold on this, go to the next beat basically and then play the C. That way everything's connected. Then you have a melody and a bass again. Uh, whenever it's on the downbeat it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, another example in after the repeat. Again it starts with the downbeat and then you have these chords. did a better job, I would hold this until I play the E and then switch to the C. The open string, you don't have to worry about it. Then here. And then here, obviously, it's even more obvious. So what I'm doing here, I'm holding the G, playing the next two notes in the next beat, switching to the F. Um, at least
least the notes in the left hand in the melody are behind in switches they're switched after the beat rather than in the middle and that's even more obvious in uh, tremolo here in the next bit here so i would play i would actually change the fingering so it's easier to hold so i would play this a let it ring while i play the e and then switch to the c sharp let the c sharp ring play the d hold the d play the f sharp After that, everything else that comes up is a repeat of those sections. But it's not really that easy to do in the beginning uh, because you have to really coordinate and sync the left hand switches with the A finger or whichever finger ends up playing that melody note. So your left hand is not switching on the downbeats and kind of feels like it's lagging. But that allows for the melody notes to be connected and not disruptive and not, um, not kind of staccato. And uh, that way it sounds more musical. So I hope that helps you with this etude. Uh, you can definitely use it as a tremolo introduction, but try to go a step further and um, see what you can do with the legato. And I'll see you next week with another etude. Thank you so much for watching.